Welcome back, kiddies, to another exciting Duckman Cycles production. Eleanor. Oh my Eleanor. Triple E herself. By the time you're seeing this video, the car show is less than a week away, and I'm over here trying to entertain you rather than finish up my car. But I should say that it's you guys that have been entertaining me. You may remember the last video where we installed a lightened flywheel and stage one pressure plate clutch. Well, the public has left their comments, and we got some good ones. Duckman, did you know that a lightened flywheel will rev up too quickly and spin right off and break your crankshaft if you don't use all eight dowels? Oh no! I don't even know what to say to that one. <laughs> if anything, a stock flywheel would be more likely to break the crank on account of having more inertia and more momentum. That's not even the reason for needing eight dowels. But how's a flywheel spinning faster than a crank to begin with? You know, this is up there with the free energy people. The lightened flywheel just going to make power, yeah, like perpetual motion. What the f***? This all goes well with the you should comments, the chrome is going to overheat your engine, and Duckman, did you know you can strip a bolt with an impact driver? <laughs> I got nothing. I... <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> well, thanks for the laugh, guys. Keep the crazy coming and post some crazy comments down below with backwards logic before some lunatic who's serious about it does it before you. Meanwhile, as you know, I scored some Delorto FRD34B carburetors some time ago. After sticking them on the engine to demonstrate for pictures, I received a lot of garbage about, why are you putting those disgusting dirty things into that beautiful car? Why don't you just buy something new? Rather than answer the hate, because that's not what I'm doing here, while it may or may not be the most intelligent of questions, it's still a question and I'll give it just a moment of respect. First off, let me remind you that Eleanor started out as junk, and I heard exactly those same remarks about this car since the beginning. I put this together from junk, I made new parts from junk, I salvaged anything I could from the junk pile to build this car the way that I wanted. So should I change that theme now? Then suddenly one day the car came back from Earl's shop, and the junk comments stopped. Now those same people are calling it a beautiful car. <laughs> Times have changed, haven't they? So what am I getting at? These Delorto FRD 34Bs are some of the best carburetors that have ever been fitted to a Volkswagen air-cooled engine. Those that are in the know have commented already and know exactly what I'm talking about. Sadly, due to lack of demand and US regulations for OEMs using carburetors, Delorto has since pulled out of the USA, and these carburetors have been discontinued. You can't get these anymore. These are valuable. These are not some China clone carbs that may or may not work right despite being brand new and shiny clean. After my entire history of rebuilding this car, do you really think for a second that a little dirt is going to stop me from making these things beautiful and functional again? <laughs> yeah, that's right, guys. I'm not some catalog commando ordering everything new. I also don't have the budget for that. I take pride in what I do. I fix things. I save things. I repurpose what I have. And as they say, built, not bought. And if you agree with that statement, then push that like button. I think I deserve it here. Thanks, guys. But you know, all my money went into the paint and body anyway, and I just can't afford new stuff anymore, so I guess I'm back to driving the neighborhoods on trash day for sheet metal again. That's probably why I have so few Patreon supporters. You know, with money you guys would fear that I'd stop doing what I do the way that I do it. But don't be fooled. I'm the guy that does lots with nothing, so I can pull things right out of my ass. But with proper funding, I just get a shop and then a junk car like Tavares's burnt Ferrari. And then we'll see what kind of crazy nonsense I'll come up with to piss off a new batch of haters. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll be back right after that intro. Duck man, you're not really gonna put that shitty, awful, disgusting, nasty, crappy, garbage, awful carburetor on your car, are you? You should really get something better. You should. Yeah, I should. Look at that. There it is. It's the same carburetors that came in the set. That's what it looks like after I got done with it. This one's about to get the same treatment. How did I make that happen? Stay tuned and I'm see. I'm just using simple green. A ratio of about, I don't know. 1 to 10 with water, maybe 1 to 5 even. I don't measure it out, I just approximate. That ought to be enough. 
A lot more waste goes into this than you'd wish for because, well, carburetors are kind of hollow voids. Fill it up with a hose. All the while I'm doing this with the extension cord on the inside of the house unplugged. I am doing this outside, as you can see also. Mainly for fumes and stuff, although I'm using Simple Green because it's non-toxic and uh, the smell of it doesn't make me sick. In fact, I find it kind of delightful. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a nice smell. Boomer, stop biting. Damn it. Get out of here. Dick. All right. <laughs> make sure the switch is on. I think it's off currently. On. Go in the house and plug in the extension cord. Turn the heater on. I put the temperature up all the way. We got 30 minutes set on it. And I have a bucket heater because bucket heaters will heat much more quickly than this thing will. I just happen to have one of those and I've been using it for years on other things, so it was convenient. Links down below in the video description if you want one. Let's submerge it, plug it in here. Give it about 20 minutes, it'll heat up. I also have the heat turned on here, so for whatever it's worth, this thing will help. But this alone takes a long time to heat the tank. That will heat it in about 15 minutes. That's how we know it's heating. All right, we'll get back to this thing with some disassembled carburetors. All right, well, let's see what we've got here. First things first, let's go ahead and take this air cleaner off of here, which doesn't even look like it's installed properly anyway. This mounting screw to it is, well, it's cross threaded. Whoever did that, whew. Oh, it looks like it's gonna come out. Not just cross threaded, but bent. All right, well, I'll have to fix that. Not to mention, I need to de rust it. Put that here. Let's open up this air cleaner here. Now, what we're gonna do with this air cleaner is we're gonna use these lids as a tray for all the parts. Now, even disgusting inside of there, look at that. It's just awful. Okay. Let's take our intake manifold off here. black on the inside too. It tells me that the thing was backfiring. So whoever's car this uh, went on, that was backfiring quite a bit. It's like it's got some paint or some shit on it too, but we'll get that cleaned off. Okay, on the carbonator, we got, oop, that was the idle sprue. <laughs> that can stay. That's actually external to the carburetor. This is our low speed mixture screw. This can come off. Then we get our air screw here. This can come off. It's actually an air jet. I said screw. Technically, I guess it is a screw, but it does have a hole through it, which makes it a jet. Take some of these body carburetors off here. Body screws off the carburetor. left-handed so you guys can see it better. Duckman, we didn't know you were left-handed. It's because I'm not. However, I can do most things left-handedly. Some things better left-handedly. Grandmother told me when I was a little boy that I was left-handed. Being that she grew up in Germany in the late 30s and early 40s that things were a little different over there and left-handed people were not particularly liked and that's about as far and as deep as I'm going to get into that 
but every time she caught me using my left hand as a little boy, and I don't remember this, this is something she told me, every time I grab a pencil or something, she'd knock it out of my hand and make me use my right hand. Guess she didn't want me to go to the camp. <laughs> Forty something years later, that stuff is long gone, Grandma, you know? But, O-ring on there, we don't want to lose that. I'm gonna leave it right on that screw. There's our cover. Inside here is a little filter. It's an O-ring also. A little filter. This guy looks clean. There's no reason I'm gonna clean that any further. I'm just gonna kind of leave that as is. It looks good. So we'll just put that aside. Right, the top of this carburetor should come off. It did. Inside here is another jet. And underneath that is an emulsification tube, which sometimes will come out, sometimes doesn't want to. Sometimes they get glued in. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's just metallurgy gets them stuck. Anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about that. If when we get this thing clean, if it flows, then we're just going to leave it be. That guy right there. All right, 14 millimeter. This end. You can tell I've done this before. This Ruby runs the exact same carburetors, which is the reason why I grabbed these when I had the opportunity. So something I had to have. All right, inside of this is our main jet. with the little rubber plug that's coming off for the distributor vacuum port. No reason to give that a bath. In fact, did I just feel there's a tear in it? No, that looks okay. Alright. Now we've got to pull our accelerator pump off. You know what? This guy got to loosen the screws on the end of it. Well, not screws. They're actually nuts. There's a spring here and there's nuts. Oh, nuts, duck man. part of the uh, return circuit on it, so... It turns the accelerator pump back to neutral when you release the throttle. But these screws are really shitty looking. Rusty, rusty, rusty. Just the heads of them, though, so I guess it's a good thing that I got to these carbs as soon as I did, because if they uh, sat outside any longer, they might have ended up in worse shape. We'll see what the accelerator pump diaphragm looks like on the inside here, and if it needs to be rebuilt. Oh, actually, no, that's in good shape. In fact, it, it looks fairly new. I'll give it a good cleaning when we put it back together, but uh, that's good. No tears in it. It's still nice and supple. It's not hard. I like it. All right, we're going to save that. Here's our little spring thing that goes inside of there. And uh, <laughs> there's a little ball bearing in, inside of the accelerator pump. You see it in there? Let's see. In that little hole, it's as close to the tip of my finger there as I can get. It's supposed to fall down when I turn this thing upside down. Obviously, it's jammed. And that's one of the problems that I had with uh, Ruby's carburetors is that little ball bearing gets stuck. And that's a check valve. So when you step on that throttle, it pulls the fuel from the bowl into the accelerator pump. And that check valve then closes as you step on the pedal, which stops pressure from going back into the bowl. And then there's a second one on the other side that works in the reverse direction that stops you from pulling air back in from the... Uh, the, uh, the throttle body and it, it allows the fuel to go in one direction only and in Ruby's carburetors that ball was stuck halfway in between so what was happening is the vacuum of uh, the engine was causing the accelerator pump to just squirt it was like a pulse squirt and it was um, 
flooding the shit, particularly out of the right-hand side of the engine. The left-hand carburetor had other problems too, but it wasn't the same. It was just different, different uh, plugging and clogging and yucky shitty problems. Anyway, we're going to get that freed up before this thing goes back together. There is a little plug in here that you can pull out somewhere in there that allows you to get to that ball bearing. Some people have told me to pull that thing out. I say leave it the hell alone. If you can get the thing moving, you can make sure everything flows correctly, there's no reason for you to start pulling apart parts of the carburetor that are not supposed to come apart. So anyway, we are officially disassembled as far as the lower half is concerned. Top half, let's go ahead and pull out our float here. If I can get it out. Nope going to be difficult. And if I can get it with these pliers. Yeah, I think I might. Yeah, I needed something with a little more of a grippy, pointier tip. Angled cutters are the only thing that I found that actually did what I needed it to do. Just don't squeeze it too hard because you will cut right the hell through it. There we go. One pin. Float pin. In she goes. Here's our float itself. Not too bad, it actually looks pretty clean. And over here we have our float valve, which we're going to remove because we're going to clean it too. There it is, there's a washer. Here's the float valve and the seat. Now that's both pieces. That there. Then, see if we can get this gasket off of here without destroying it. Sometimes they bond themselves, like they've been glued and they just get ruined. This one looks like it might come off. So if I can reuse these, this will be good. I was told these carburetors needed to be rebuilt, and they're not looking that way. Between the accelerator pump, diaphragm looking to be in good shape, this gasket appearing to be in good shape. If the float seal works correctly, which Oh, it's metal. It doesn't even have a rubber tip on it like they usually do. That's interesting. This is a rubber in the seat. No, it's metal on metal. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, a little dirty in there. All right, well, we're going to take care of that. And this little tube comes off of here. Let's not forget where that goes. And I think at this point, we're ready to put this thing in the bath. It looks like everything is loosened up. There's our carbodeuter. Boy, this looks like hell. Look at all that. Oh my god. Well, let's see what kind of cleaning this uh, thing can do. I've been told it's good. So, we'll soak it and see what happens. While we're at it, I think I should probably take these off the linkage too. Because these things look pretty shitty and I need a good cleaning. Maybe even wire wheel them, will depend on how I feel about that. But I'll take off the center section, take off this, and I'll polish the entire length of this. Because it needs to be pretty and it's just currently, it's not. That's just not at all. I am not happy with that. Okay. Hey, yeah, neighbor stopped by and was talking to me for a little bit and distracted me. So I forgot to, ooh, that little cut. Forgot to take this out. It looks like we've actually boiled it down from where it was. I'm going to have to put some more water in there. Okay. I guess that'll bring the temperature of it back down a bit because that's hotter than I want it to be. Boy, that simple green steam smells real nice. There we go. Now it's not as hot as it was. I suppose we can unplug this thing. I don't think I need that on there anymore. Yeah, you know what, I see the temperature falling. So 77 right now from 80. It was probably right at about 100 degrees Celsius, so. Yeah, we'll let it bring up temperature again. Just let it do its thing. Oh, that cooled down a lot just sitting. All right, bitty screaming. All right, let's go ahead and get loaded up. Let's see. We'll put this in first. Maybe like that in the corner. Put this in. This is my 
tray of all the screws and stuff because obviously you know these things are not going to stay in this tray so we have to come up with a solution for that and i think that's probably going to be the best one how's this thing oriented i guess we're set up like this actually okay let's put that there and this That might work. You got room for the manifold in there? I think that actually might work out quite well. Put that in there even. I hope I'm not overcrowding, uh, if that even matters. I don't know if it does or not. Well, since there's only pinpoints of things touching each other, it's probably fine. All right, now I gotta get this back in this tank. And I think I pulled this out. Did I not? No. Okay. See how hot it actually is. Oh yeah, it's hot. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Alright. Yeah. I have to delicately drop this in here and try not to get my hands into the hot shit. Got it. Yeah, we got a couple of screws protruding, but that's okay. Those don't need to be cleaned. Alright, let's sit. Now comes the fun part. This here, this is amazing. Oh my god, that's loud. Oh! We're gonna run it for 30 minutes. That's what everybody seems to recommend online. 25 to 30. I'm just gonna go for 30. And we'll see what we turn up with. Uh, these carburetors were pretty corroded and dirty. And we'll see if this makes any difference at all. I understand the alkaline environment might discolor some of the aluminum a little bit. If that's the case, that's fine. But I just want everything clean. So let's see what happens. That's it. Ready to rock and roll. Okay. There it is. Not so green anymore. Turned a little gray. <laughs> As to be expected. Yeah, all that dirt changed the color of that. Well, anyway, I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit. No reason to have this plugged in anymore, I suppose. We could just uh, unplug that. And we'll fish this stuff out of here and lay it over here on the tray. It's still a little hot for me to touch, but once I pull up these little bits, and yes, the dogs are barking next door like crazy. Once it sits up in the cool air, it cools down pretty quick. Oh, I love that simple green smell. <laughs> All right, there we are. Put this lid back on and try to keep some of that heat back in here. Because you know what? We're going to run another batch of something else here. I've got a, the generator stand off of Eleanor that I think looks like shit. So we're going to throw that in there. I'm also going to throw both the air cleaners in there and we'll let them soak too. So I don't even know why I unplugged it. Maybe just because my hands were touching it. Let's turn it back on. Let's make sure the heat stays on. And we'll set the timer on it. I suppose we'll give it about 30 minutes. Well, that's all it's got anyway is 30 minutes. Oh, you know what? I gotta put it in the tray first before we do anything. Yeah, I have to separate my parts from here. It's gonna be a little hot. That's not too bad. You know, some of this stuff can go back in one more time, maybe. Yeah, there's still a little bit of corrosion on these here. Those could, could live one more bath. So could this. That looks pretty good. This is still kind of, kind of, oh, you know what? It's just dirt. It's just dirt. It wipes right off. Stuff just needs a good rinse. And there's my little tray of parts. All the jets and everything else. All right. Let's put this in there. We'll put these pieces back in. I'll throw that lid in there one more time too. Get the air cleaners in there. 
if this is all going to fit. comes that awful sound. Oh, God. All right, we'll take these up front and we'll get them reassembled. Well, if you don't know what you're looking at here, it might be a little bit daunting, but uh, there's really not that many pieces. I mean, yeah, we got a lot of little screws and bits and bobs and springs and things, and I'm going all by memory on this, so I might once or twice forget to put a washer somewhere, but <laughs> I think I can gather my shit together and get this thing assembled properly. Uh, there is a little bit of white residue on some stuff. You can see that. That's actually from the Simple Clean. It just wipes right off. Everything is going to get a good dosage of some carburetor cleaner before it gets reassembled anyway. I'm going to go through all the ports that are on here. Uh, you might be able to see it. There's a little ball bearing that's inside of there. Like way in there. There's actually two of them. There's another one down inside of here. And that is the check valve for the uh, accelerator pump on the side. And I was having a problem with that on Ruby's carburetors on both of them. One was on the inlet side and one was on the outlet side, which was causing fuel to do all kinds of weird things, including just squirting out of the accelerator pump while it was running in pulses. Really interesting. Anyway, once I cleaned Ruby's carburetors, I didn't have a problem after that. The uh, previous owner of these carburetors told me they needed a rebuild, but I'm looking at everything. I mean, all the seals and gaskets and accelerator pump are all fine. In fact, that looks fairly new. This doesn't look like anything's wrong with it, not a tear on it. Um, we'll see if the float valve works as effectively, which I don't see it. Oh, there it is. This goes up in here, and that's how that guy works, along with the float. The float was the only thing I didn't wash, because it's just going to float. <laughs> so I didn't bother. Yeah, I probably could have sunk it, but I'll just give it a quick spray off. It looks like it's pretty clean anyway. It really didn't need much. All right, let's start getting this thing assembled. It's a noisy neighborhood day. It turns out the audio is for crap. I'm just going to power through this thing and not bother with letting you hear anything. So we'll just see what happens. The dog across the street keeps barking. There's a garbage truck in the neighborhood. So we'll just see how the day goes. Anyway, in the bottom of the bowl, there's a little bit of residue, not much. Simple Clean did a really good job of getting that out of there. I mean, this carburetor looks like it's brand new. This is ridiculous. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn my compressor on. Oh yeah. You know what, before I go any further, let me get that compressor turned on. This thing is just so clean, it's, it, I swear it looks like it's new. This is just amazing. All right, probably start out with the main body here. Just make sure all of our passageways are cleaned. Somebody somewhere is probably screaming, Duckman, you're getting that carburetor cleaner on your hands. That'll kill you. Yeah, I suppose if I immersed my hands in it for a long period of time, worst it's going to do right now is it might crack my skin. Okay, did I miss a spot? Sure did. Get way in there. And I like these carburetors. I, uh got them on Ruby when I first bought the car and they ran like crap and I blame the carburetors for just being garbage but the truth of the matter was the previous owners didn't know what he was doing didn't know how to set anything up he had a mechanic do the work and needless to say when the mechanic did the work he just kind of put dirty shitty scuzzy carburetors on there that had problems and they weren't that hard to fix had to know what you were doing. Alright, let's run this side. I can see that ball bearing in there is now loose. You see it? 
You can actually hear it even. It was not moving before until I hit it with this. I guess I had a little bit of that simple green residue. If you do see it on anything, it's that white stuff that uh, it comes right off. It's just like a dry crust. It dissolves in, in just about anything. I imagine even if it got gasoline on it, if you had a little bit of it inside your carburetor, it's not going to be the end of the world. Because it'll dissolve and turn to nothing. Oops. And what I've done also is I've separated my mounting screws from my internal jets and everything else. So I've got all the washers put on that stuff. I got all the nuts and bolts over here that mount everything, as well as the washers that go on the top of the air cleaner. There's a wing nut over there for it too. There's another wing nut somewhere. There it is, that belongs over there with that. There's also a long spring. Here it is. This uh, went between those wing nuts to lock them together. Got a couple of rubber plugs and things. Keep them over here. This has got a little bit of residue on the outside. This is just the uh, needle for the low speed. These are interesting too. When you tune them for a 1600 engine, your low speed screw has only turned out about half a turn, maybe even just a quarter. And on Ruby, it's somewhere between. And this one goes, I believe, right in here. Tighten it all the way and then back off. Half a turn. That's it. All right, let's get our accelerator pump on here. There's a spring that goes in it right here. And the pump itself, which is just a diaphragm. And then there's a lever that covers it all. And then there's four little bitty screws that go inside. I don't believe, no, I was wrong. I was just about to say, I don't believe they have washers, but they do. Here they are, and here's the four washers to them. I'm glad I separated all this stuff in advance of recording. Yeah, got a little bit of that simple green residue on there, as I was telling you. That's all it takes to make it go away. Be real careful with these diaphragms that you don't accidentally run the screw through them. Because if you do, then it's shot. And then you gotta get a rebuild kit for it. And these Delorto rebuild kits, um, they're not the hardest thing to find. And they're certainly not the easiest either. But CB Performance does keep them in inventory. Last I checked, I've also seen them on eBay. But the previous owner of these carburetors told me they needed to rebuild. I don't even think they needed a, a cleaning inside. The insides of them actually look pretty good. The outside was shitty, though, from sitting in a shed. In a corner, on a floor, in a shed for so long. And then when I put them over here, they were sitting in the shed also. And my shed is, um, well, you don't get rained on directly. Weather does affect it. Humidity gets in there. There's lots of dust. And these carburetors were already greasy, shitty anyway, because that's just the way air-cooled engines are. So, now it's no longer a problem, and I'm a damn idiot because I should have put this shaft into that accelerator pump arm first. As soon as I saw it, I remembered what I did wrong here. <laughs> All right, well, let's make that happen. The spring goes on like that, the lever goes over him, and then the whole pump assembly drops into place just like that. You'll have to excuse my big hands. They may block a little bit of your view here and there. Come on, dark man, get this screw in there, you fumbling fool. All right. I think this is the same screwdriver that split my finger open about two weeks ago. So it's actually sharp. I was tightening a uh, screw on the side of the carburetor and it went up my finger from here to about here. Long scratch. And you notice it has horizontal marks going that way. That's because it started to crack. And for the last two weeks, it's been me fighting with it to stop it from cracking, to finally get it to heal. And as of about two days ago, it finally started to close up. But I had to stop working for just two days and uh, put all kinds of ointments on it and tape my finger straight. Because every time I would bend it, it would just, yeah, it was a, just a complete mess. It was ugly. All right, we get all these just snugged up. 
you don't have to over torque these or anything crazy it's just an accelerator pump all right now there's two nuts that go on the side here see one of them has a little machine work done to it the other one's just a regular nut and that one with the machine work there goes down into the lever for the accelerator pump here Boy, it was real foolish to put this on here because now it's in my way why did I do that so soon probably just because it was staring me right in the face and it said hey duck man why don't you do me first sounds like one of my Friday nights hey duck man do me first okay this is probably gonna need some adjusting although usually I find myself maxing the thing out let's get that on there like that and we'll put our idle, whoops, idle low speed adjustment here. Stop turning and then, whoop, half turn out. All right, carbodeuter is beginning to look like something, right? Not really. <laughs> okay, there's two screws that go on the side of it. They are both identical screws. Neither one of them really matters where they go. Because all that these do is just seal up some ports on the front, and I believe this is where they um, they drilled through the body. In fact, you know, looking inside of them, they don't even look like they have a, um, a passageway. It's just, uh, yeah, they just kind of bottom out. Bottom out in there. Anyway, the one screw goes here. And the other one, with a matching washer, goes in there. I hate flathead screws. All right, those are coming along. We got our main jet which is here, and I've already checked the sizes on all this stuff, and it's actually jetted properly for a 1600 already. Which is really nice. When you blow these things out, guys, hold them really tight, because I've done this before, and the jet goes, and it's gone. So, real tight, you gotta hold them. And I believe that one, no, that's not the main jet. Where is the main jet? Here's the main jet. My bad. I was looking at the wrong pieces here. That goes down inside of this part here. And this, I actually cleaned it before I started running the camera. <laughs> there you go. And then our main jet threads right in the end of that. This is one of those things you don't make overly tight, you just make it. Alright, I hope that gasket's still good. Looks a little beat up, but if it seals, it's fine. Alright. Make sure it's snug. This goes in the bowl of the carburetor. I believe that's a 14 millimeter wrench. Yep. You can tell I've done that a couple times before. What else we got here? We need to start assembling the top. There is a little filter. This guy. This is, uh, I didn't put it through the machine. Just like the float, it was one of the things that I didn't find any reason to soak in the ultrasonic cleaner. That goes on the top there. Then there's an O-ring. It goes in this. This is our little cap. You know what? That could use a good cleaning too. Had a little bit of residue on it. Much better. Look at that. Take our O-ring in there. And our screw goes in the top of that. That's our inlet fuel filter, the last defense 
before shit gets in the carburetor. <laughs> that I probably should have wire wheeled. That's, uh, looks like it's just stained. Well, you know what? That did a hell of a job. I guess it was just some residue from the uh, machine left on it. Not bad. A little bit of schmutz there on the top. Again, look like residue out of the machine. Alright. Got a couple passageways in here we should clean out too. Should have done that first. But I didn't. Excellent. Just the slightest bit of white residue from the simple green. Alright. This is the float valve seat. I should clean that out too, see if there's anything in there. Some of this brass stuff is a little tarnished from the simple green. The simple green does have a bit of an alkaline, um, a bit of an alkaline on the pH scale and, uh, it can cause a little discoloration of metals. And I noticed that a little bit, because you see this uh, Delora carburetor, it's kind of a gold color. It's very, very mildly gold. And if you look at the body of it, you'll see some of that actually went away. As well as the intake manifold turned out a little darker than I expected it to be, but I like that, because Eleanor's engine is mostly dark colors, so that's actually gonna work. I didn't want anything too light colored anyway, so I'm not complaining about it, not one bit. But if you want something bright and shinier, you might want to try something different, or maybe not soak it as long. These were in for about, oh, I guess you saw the video already, they are in for about 25-30 minutes. I pulled it out a little bit before the 30 minute. But there it is. Okay. I'm gonna set the float height, and I'm gonna have to check the manual on that. So it might be coming back to that. It may not happen in this video, but it is one of those things I'm going to have to check. And then our pin goes in. There she goes. Yeah, you got a working float. Okay, this guy's been a little discolored also. These can be uh, a little hard to clean out sometimes. Nope, I got it. I saw all the shit blowing through the hole. Alright, good. This one, I think, goes in the top. Is that right? No, that's not right. Been a little while. We're gonna come back to that then. Let's handle the stuff that I am familiar with that I do know right away. That one, go there. screw on the side here. And we got two more jets. One of them goes in the top and I believe it's this one. That one 
goes in there. And I think this one goes in here, but I don't know if I'm right on that or not. I might have to check the other carburetor. Snug it up. See if this all fits. If it does, then that was it. If it doesn't, well, then I'm wrong. It did. Okay. That appears to be right. Just snug this guy up in here. Now it's starting to look like a carbodooter. Look at that. Yeah, we got our little plug over here for the vacuum port. That vacuum port plug is actually going to be taken off and used. I have another cap over here for some port on something. I don't know what else on this gets capped off. I don't think anything. Unless somebody just put it on the end here to stop that from getting, you know, scratching anything. Well, that's not right. I don't know. Somebody's phone is ringing right now, though. And it's really obnoxious. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Ha ha ha. Duck man, you damn idiot. This gasket was supposed to go on before you put the float in. <laughs> oh. yeah, this got to go in there first. Been a little while, you can tell how rusty I am at this stuff. But I love these Delordos, man. I mean, they're so simple. They work. And I've had nothing but good experience with them on Ruby's engine. Once they were cleaned, anyway. Of course, once I got that car, everything was out of tune and disgustingly dirty. Plus, they were running a 30 PSI fuel pump into them, which wasn't doing it any favors. All right, now this can go on the top. All right, now we have a bunch of carburetor cap screws to these here. The one with the tag. Give that a little, a little something. It's nice to have the tag on the carburetor. So many carburetors, they lose that over the years. Or worse yet, some idiot puts a different tag on from a different carburetor. Which may or may not even be the case with these, I don't know. I guess we'll find out when I actually have to do get a rebuild kit for them. Now, we're going to be one screw short, and that's deliberate, because this air cleaner actually uses one of the screw ports to hold it down and keep it straight. So we're going to run these in. Oh, Duckman, you forgot something. I sure as hell did. I missed something here. Uh-oh. Duckman, you forgot to put a part in. You're a ding-dong, Duckman. What else do I have laying around here? That was it. That and an O-ring, apparently. Guess I missed an O-ring, too. The nice part about these is, as long as you don't lose anything, they really only go together one way. It's easy to leave something out, but it's not easy to put something in the wrong hole. Wrong hole, wrong hole! You know, I think that O-ring belongs on this screw right up here. We'll check that real quick too. Yep, that's exactly where it goes. Went right in there. And then that screw went right in there. Knew something didn't look right. I thought there was supposed to be a washer under there though, but no, it was an O-ring. Alright, snug that back up. Now I gotta figure out where the hell this tube goes that I left out. Which I think... No. 
Is that damn alarm going off again? Don't know what it is. Been doing that for years. Sometimes I'll do it late at night on the weekends for just no reason at all. I never see cops over there. No, it's anybody's guess. This is threaded on one end. You know how you ruin somebody's day? You take an extra carburetor part, and when you're working on something like this, just drop it in there. <laughs> That's probably what I'm looking at here. I don't know what I've done wrong. I'm gonna have to check all of my other stuff. I found it. I don't know how I didn't see it before. Thread's right in here. That's odd that I just don't remember that. I don't have a wrench over here small enough for this, so we're gonna be real delicate. Just give it a little bit. It doesn't really have a lot of stress on it because it's not a uh, load-bearing component. So we don't have to like torque it down to you know 17 foot pounds or some shit like that. I'm sure somebody right now in the comments section is saying exactly that. Hey Duckman! Supposed to torque that down. Oh Duckman! Oh Duckman! Oh Duckman! Duckman! Oh Duckman! This is uh Again, flathead screws. I'd love to use my impact on it, but the impact always manages to wander, fly off, or in this case, it's gonna tighten these things too much. It'll chew the screws up when you get to the end. Of course, if you're not careful. Electric screwdriver might be nice, but I own one. Just don't like it. All right, that one goes on there, that one goes on there. One more over here. Snug, snug. And then our air cleaner goes up on top like this. And then over here on the side, we're going to have this screw and a standoff. And this screw is going to run through the air cleaner and right down into the body of the carburetor. Hey, just like that. And that stops the assembly from pivoting on top of the carburetor, which is important because this arm will be putting a little bit of stress onto it and could cause it to move. And that will prevent it. Oh my god. Kid's getting a shit spanked out of him with his shoe. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> All right, our air cleaner's just gonna go on top. This I put it in the cleaner also. It, it, it really did a good job, but I'm gonna throw it in one more time. It is a little beat up, and it's not good enough for Eleanor. I'm going to put a better air cleaner on, but this will be good enough to get us started. We'll put the lid up on there. Should have a couple of rubberized washers. Go right on top of that. Zen Zuving nuts. These look shitty also, a little rusty. I'll de-rust them. I can make it look nicer than that. Looks like somebody did a little brazing on here. There's like a, a brass color. Interesting. I think this lid can be cleaned up a little better than it is, too. Probably shove it in the wire wheel. Hey, right, there's our washers and our nuts to mount the carburetor. And other than this little plug, which may not be from this carburetor, I don't even know why it's here. It's the only plug I'm aware of goes on the uh, the inlet here. Yeah, this was not something you would ordinarily see on here unless somebody did something funny. So that's all there is to these things. These things are simple. Real simple. Alright. Shove it on that manifold. Let's see what she looks like. backwards actually. I think the bung is supposed to point backwards as bungs properly should.
Here we go. What a beauty. Oh, Duckman, what? you're not really going to put that shitty, disgusting, awful garbage carburetor on that beautiful car, are you? You're such a fool, man. Oh, I can't believe you. I think that looks friggin' awesome. You can't buy them anymore. They've been out of production probably almost 40 years. Yeah, 40 years. I'm just guessing that. I think they went out of production in the 80s. I really don't know. Somebody down below in the comments post, but these FRDs are incredibly rare, and they're going up in price because they're getting harder and harder to find. And, well, you just, yeah, yeah. This car was built just from junk, and this is just one of those things that I recycled somebody else's stuff that they weren't going to use. So, overjoyed. Yeah, it looks like something's missing here, but there's uh, nothing in that hole. Same with these threaded holes here. I guess those are just mounting holes. Nothing actually goes in them because they don't go down to anything. They're just blind holes. Yeah, and how about the other side? Probably the same thing over there. Yep, more blind holes. They don't go into anything. So some kind of mounting apparatus goes to it, I guess. Anyway, this looks great. Check that out. Just beautiful. And yes, they're Italian. Only the best stuff for my Eleanor. <laughs> That, that air cleaner does need to be changed though. I am not happy with that just for the sake of being so ugly. But I don't know what size we need yet and we won't know until we get this engine mounted. When this engine goes in the car, we'll know. Because I don't know if those air cleaners are going to actually clean if the actual... I don't know if these air cleaners are going to actually clear the engine compartment because when I chopped the roof on that car, I lowered the engine compartment a little bit. And especially right here in the corners, it's going to come down a little bit. So we'll see if we have an issue. We may not, and I hope we don't, but I guess we'll see. Oh yeah, my favorite part of the day. Oh, ah, well, cleaning those carburetors I think was the wisest thing to do because when it comes to Delorto carburetors, particularly the uh, FRD 34Bs that are on here, they've been out of production for a long time. I can still get rebuild kits for them. Uh, there are other FRD carburetors that are out there that use some similar parts, so Delorto still makes the kits. And CB Performance is one such place that still stocks them. But you can't buy these things anymore. I mean, the closest thing you're probably going to get is perhaps a, Weber set, uh, a set of Weber ICTs or maybe one of the Chinese knockoff clones, which a lot of people say aren't the greatest things in the world. I have uh, a set of real Webers here in the garage that I did have on Eleanor's engine previous. And you might remember as I tried to run them, they just leaked like a sieve. Now, that doesn't mean it's a carburetor's fault. It just means there was problems with seals and gaskets and things because it had been sitting for so long. But these Delorto carburetors, so many people told me, don't use them, Duck Man. Why would you put them pieces of garbage on your engine? Well, do they look like pieces of garbage anymore? I don't think so. And, and I swear, that's up there with um, so many of the other comments that I've got in building this car. Because if you remember, Eleanor started out as junk. And. I built it from pieces of junk until finally the ball of junk became so big it became a car. At that point, that junky car got patched, fixed, tweaks, you know, flattened, pulled, stretched. I mean, whatever I could do to it to make it different and unique because I knew I was never going to get it stock again. And now I've got a beautiful car as a result after Earl finished it with the paint and body work. And I could, couldn't have done it or gotten it to where it is, you know, certainly or not as quickly as it was, and it still never would have hit that caliber. Um, <laughs> if it wasn't handled by Earl over at Classic Car Creations. Why are you giving everybody the butt again? There you go. Face forward, baby. That's cheeky. So many people are asking, you know, hey, what's the bird? It's like, I make a bird video, you know, a chicken video every week for the last seven, eight weeks, something like that. Of course, you're on my YouTube channel, and it's not like I haven't talked about my website or my other YouTube channels since the beginning of time. <laughs> that just means you guys aren't listening to the message once again. But, um... I digress. These carburetors, these Delorto's FRD uh, 34Bs that are on here, these things are incredibly hard to find anymore, and you're not, certainly not going to find a set that are in such really good shape. And the comment is saying that these carburetors are junk is up there with, you know, chrome engine's going to overheat, and your impact driver's going to strip your bolts out, you know, a whole lot of nonsense. And <laughs> you guys got to be laughing with me about these remarks because people just, just love to make them. And, and, and I keep getting new ones, and I'm just going to make a list. I think I'm going to put it on. The duck man's wall of shame, you know, the, the, the most hated comments. You should is another one that's up there. You should is probably going to be number one. But yeah, I'll, I'll give a top ten, you know, most BS comments that I've ever received. And, and I think I'm going to add that to the website. It needs to be there. But anyways, I think that's about it for today. So please, guys, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the ding bell. You get updates every time I have a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links, as well as my other YouTube pages. That's right, guys. I've got more than one. 
And if you're not seeing the videos about chickens, then that means you're not looking in the right place. Right, Cheeky? Oh, good baby. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Ha, 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 ha.